of the most difficult things environmentally to get the sense of the vast epic quality of the play as well as the intimacy. So what I did is I went right back to the original form that the plays were supposedly originally produced on the Shakespeare supposed stage with the two columns and the inner above and the inner below and I morphed it from that. So in the end we wound up with, and I can't really explain how we came to that conclusion, we have what is a steel frame which is a kind of cage and in Venice we have this stunning aluminum steel wall with the logo of Venice, which is the winged lion. And that arrives from way upstage and appears and connects into the cage and the bridge. And that design came from removing the facade of a Venetian building and leaving the frame, except for one wall upstage. And so we play out Venice in that way. The winged lion, I, I, I just accepted and I found a way to put it into the space of the audience at the top of the play has a certain feel for I know where we are, we're in Venice. Um, and not, not so much that they don't know we're in Venice, but I just picked a classic item. But at the very last scene, which is the Act 5-2 of Shakespeare's Othello, which is basically in the bedroom, the wall on its reverse side glides on and it's a huge stone wall with a panther carved into the base of it. You will discover it on the wall, not right off the bat, but it is like a, a lion. It is like a it is like an Othello who is trapped in a cage in stone, um, knowing from the beginning of the play of being a different a different sensibility who comes into a European world, a Western world, and ultimately in the end is, is trapped by it. it. It does add a shocking presence to that bedroom scene, which ultimately blows up into a room full of people, which to me, it doesn't really matter for the audience, but it parallels in, in Venice when we were in the Senate, and how the political world of the Senate of Venice winds up in the intimate world of a bedroom in Cyprus where all of the same characters in the main arrive to this room and it's Amelia who screams and hollers and tells me what's happening and how the world of men has become corrupted. It's exciting to come to the end of the day have the audience come in and have an evening of theater, whether it's a comedy or a tragedy, that's thrilling. It's, it's live. It, it, it's susceptible to change. And it also drives the audience's own personal imagination about what the world is, not only in the past, but how it is playing itself out right now.